Back in March, we laid out the swells. After that, we had a backhoe operator come out and dig those for us. I believe he spent a total of about 11 hours working, and the total was about $700. The ground where the swells were dug had some heavy clay, and with that plus the fescue, we ended up with some very large clumps that were impossible to break up by hand. I had them come back out with a rototiller and go over the larger clumps, and that broke them up okay. We pushed the piles up near the swells to form up the berms, and that worked pretty good. But it still took a lot of time to go through there by hand and get all the rocks and clumps out of there. There were a lot of rocks that were pretty big from the size of a shoe to the size of a bowling ball. And we threw those into the swells. And we've used some of those in other areas. And there's still a lot out there that we can use in the future. So that's going to be a pretty good resource too. It was several weeks before I eventually got the major clods chopped out by hands and the berm smoothed out enough so that we could put the trees in. February was particularly warm, and the trees that were supposed to show up in March ended up showing up earlier. And so we actually had the trees on hand before we even dug the swells. We had 600 trees sitting out in the barn waiting to go into the ground, and they were out there for a couple of weeks, and this put additional stress on those trees. So we did have some pretty high losses in some of the trees. The trees that seemed to do the best in, in that area were the um, false indigo trees. Of all the false indigo trees we planted, I think nearly all of those have survived, and not only that, they thrived. The trees that fared the worst seemed to be the pecans, but I believe that's because they were the last trees to be planted. So they had sat out in the barn longer than everything else. That April, we had about a 500-year flood event here in the Ozarks, and here on the property, we got over 8 inches of rain. And, and So needless to say, the swells were filled up rapidly. And after that, they held water for a very long time because of the high clay content. During that entire deluge, we didn't have any failures in any of the swells. The uh, level sw seals worked well, and the water sheeted off over those. I had one swell that had a little bit of a low spot in it, and water overtopped the uh, downhill side, but the berm picked that up, and there, we didn't have any issues with it, no blowouts. With the swales holding so much water during that period of time, we had quite a lot of interest from the geese. And I think they ended up bringing in uh, quite a bit of aquatic type seeds. And they did a good job of manuring out there and bringing in some additional nutrients. The trees that we did put out in the berms were pecan, pawpaw, persimmon, uh, false indigo, and uh, chokeberry, and elderberry. In addition to the trees, we broadcast uh, yarrow seeds, sage seeds, echinacea, bee balm, and lemon balm. Uh, these seeds germinated to varying degrees uh, depending on which swell berm they were on because some of the swell berms were entirely clay, and while others did have some okay topsoil. With all of the disturbance from the digging of the swells, it was inevitable that we would get some weeds coming up in the berms. So the first thing that really showed up en masse was the Queen Anne's lace. Queen Anne's lace is a wild carrot, and it has a, a white frilly flower. And during this time, we also had real good success with the echinacea. Um, I, I didn't know it was echinacea to begin with because it, it was hard to tell until they began to flower. But after they flowered, we could see that we had gotten a real good germination rate out of the echinacea, and that was good to see. Some of the ground covers, like the yarrow and the sage, started out pretty good in certain areas. As the weeds came on, they got shaded out. As the summer wore on and it got very hot and dry, the Queen Anne's lace began to die off, and so did the echinacea. 
And after that, the ragweed came in. So the succession was Queen Anne's Lace to ragweed. And at this present time, which is uh, late September, the ragweed's beginning to die out. It's already run its course. So pretty soon we'll be able to see what trees have survived. Right now everything's pretty tall and it's hard to tell unless it's a specifically tall tree like some of the uh, false indigos. I have noticed a couple of apple trees that I've put in are doing pretty good now. And I know that a good bit of the um, comfrey is is doing well. We had For the first year of the swells, um, so far so good. No major anomalies and we'll keep you updated on everything that happens in the future thanks for watching and if you like this video please give us a thumbs up or consider subscribing